section of epidemiological studies. Today what we are going to look at is a type of analytical study design that is case control. In another session we have seen what are cohort studies. So today we are going to look at case control study designs, the most common and most frequently used analytical study designs in epidemiological studies. So when we use the word case control, it automatically means that this study has got two groups of people or study subjects. One is the cases and another is control. Now the word case in epidemiology means a person suffering from a given health condition or disease. So we use the same term when we design a case control study. So when we begin our case control study, we need to look at who are going to be our cases and who are going to be our controls. So the point to remember in a case control study is when we start our study, we will have individuals who are diseased as our cases and individuals who are not diseased as our controls. So this is the differentiating point between a cohort study and a case control study. We start with the disease in a case control study. So our two groups are based on presence or absence of the disease. So presence of the disease is the cases and absence of the disease is our controls. So when we begin a case control study, what we do is we first have our cases selected and for every case we will have a control selected. Now how do we do this? Let's take an example. If I want to do a case control study to study the association between use of oral contraceptives and breast cancer among women who are 40 years and above. So that's my um, uh, research question or that's what I want to study. So how do I start? Um, I start with women who are suffering from breast cancer or who have been diagnosed with breast cancer based on the criteria which I have based like recently diagnosed the grade of cancer and the age group which I want to target. So all women who satisfy this criteria or eligibility criteria for my study are included as cases. Now who are going to be my controls? This is a very important feature of case control studies and the most difficult part I guess because selection of controls is very very important and it is it may decide on how your results are going to be. What I mean by that is when you select your controls as I said earlier they should be free from the disease under study. So our controls can be women who are over 40 years of age but who do not suffer from breast cancer. Now the question still remains whether these women who are our controls can they be suffering from any other disease or do they have to be healthy controls. So the answer to this is we can either have women who are not suffering from any other disease but we can also include women who are suffering from other cancers or other types of diseases not related to breast cancer. This is a very important step. So what we do is for every case we have to select a control. Now you can come across reading material which says that the ratio of cases to controls can be either 1 is to 1 that means for one case one control or it could be 1 is to 2, 1 is to 4 and so on. You can decide on this ratio but the minimum is one case and one control. So for every case you need a control. Now if you think of the word bias here, we can have selection bias in this particular kind of study if we do not select the cases and the controls appropriately. Now to eliminate this kind of bias, we have to do a process known as matching. Now what is the meaning of the word matching? As I said earlier, cases are the ones with disease and controls are the ones without disease. So the cases and the controls if we match them, it means that they will differ from each other only in the way that one suffers from the disease and the other doesn't suffer from the disease. However, all the other characteristics like in this case the age group or maybe um, uh, the occupation or socioeconomic characteristics of that person or who is a case matches with that of control. What I mean by that is if you have um, a case which is like a 56 year old woman suffering from grade 1 breast cancer as your case you need to select a con as a control ideally for matching 56 year old woman who does not suffer from breast cancer maybe belonging to the same socioeconomic status this is what we call as matching now matching can be done for either one characteristic or more than one characteristic in this case 
I tried to match for age. So we have women of the same age in both the groups. And I also tried to match for socioeconomic class. So women from the same socioeconomic class are included as cases and controls. So that's what I mean by matching. Now what's the next step? Having selected the cases and controls, what we try to do is we try to measure the exposure. Now in this case, what's our exposure? Use of oral contraceptives which has occurred in the past is our exposure. All right. And no exposure is not having used oral contraceptives in the past. So what is important to remember here is we start with the disease and we look back for the exposure in the past. So case control studies are also known as retrospective studies. The reason being they start with the disease in the present and they look for exposure which has occurred in the past. So this is an important thing to remember that we start with the disease and we look out for exposure or we measure the exposure which has occurred in the past. Now what problems we can encounter if we are trying to recall something which has occurred in the past? It exactly results in something which we call as a recall bias. Some women may have used oral contraceptives in the past but they may quite not remember uh, for how long or what was the duration when they used it or what brand of oral contraceptives they have used depending on what you want to extract from them. So this is a very important feature that we need to remember that when we are trying to measure exposure which has occurred in the past, we have to rely solely on the information provided by our study subjects. So we have to be very careful in what we are trying to um, get from our study subjects. So what we have seen till now is we selected our cases, we selected the controls and we have looked in both these groups whether use of oral contraceptives is present, in other words exposure is present or there is no use of oral contraceptives which means that there is no exposure. Now at the end of all this what do we get? What do we measure? So the measure of disease frequency in a case control study is prevalence because we are starting off with cases of disease which already exist. So what we get in a case control study is prevalence of the disease or firstly we can find out proportion of cases of the disease in those who are exposed and proportion of the cases of the disease amongst those who are not exposed. So we do not get any incidence in a case control study, we just get prevalence because we are starting off with already existing cases of the disease. Second thing, the measure of association which we calculate in a case control study is known as an odds ratio, also known as OR and other name for odds ratio is estimated relative risk. Why we say that is because we just measure the likelihood or the chance of suffering from a disease from the disease under question in the exposed group and the non-exposed group. The calculation for odds ratio has already been uh, seen in another session on measuring risk in epidemiology. So based on what is the odds of exposure, uh, odds of the disease, odds of exposure in the disease group and odds of exposure in the non-disease group, that's what we are going to compare when we do an odds ratio. So in a case control study, we get two things, a measure of disease frequency which is prevalence and secondly measure of association which is odds ratio. We cannot calculate a relative risk in a case control study, the reason being we cannot get incidence in a case control study. So that's about the design and the measures which we calculate in a case control study. Finally, let's look at what are the strengths and weaknesses of doing case control studies. Now case control studies are very very useful when we have limited resources like we need to finish the study in a short time, we have less manpower or less um, money or finances to conduct the study. So it is a relatively quicker, cheaper and easier type of study design as compared to a cohort study. We can use relative risk, uh, sorry, we can use case control studies to study rare diseases. So it's a very good uh, study design to study rare diseases and we can study multiple exposures when we talk about case control studies. The disadvantage of a case control study is if we talk from the point of view of proving causation of a disease, um, the ability of case control studies is not that good when we talk about uh, proving causation. The reason being we start with the disease. So a temporal sequence which we need to establish to prove causation cannot be found in uh, a case control study. Secondly, we have spoken a bit earlier about the types of bias. We can have selection bias and recall bias as the most common disadvantages 
of case control study. So we have to be very careful when we select our cases and controls. However, the bias of recall, um, we cannot eliminate it completely. The reason being the events have occurred in the past and we cannot ensure, be assured of uh, that whatever information our study subjects are giving us would be uh, correct or would be reliable. So these are the advantages and the disadvantages of case control study. So that's all in a nutshell about this very useful analytical study design, case control study. Keep watching, keep subscribing and let me know your comments. Thank you very much. Have a great day.